I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today, we're gonna to do an Inkscape tutorial. Specifically, we'll make some 2D flat vector minimalist landscape art. And here's a couple examples I did earlier. This one is Malaga, Costa del Sol, Spain, but I thought it came out kind of bland. So instead, we'll do this purple number over here. And if you're gonna play along, here are the skills we'll cover specifically. First, we'll do a gradient tool customization so you can take the colors from any two you want and then we'll actually make it a triple gradient. I'll show you how to add a third stop. We'll do some basic lighting tricks. We'll do the interpolate function for some wave effect. And finally, we'll wrap it up by cropping the selection to whatever size and dimensions that you want. So let's begin. We'll start by grabbing your Create Rectangles and Squares tool and then just pull out a rectangle roughly the size of uh, the project you wanna do. If you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it's this paintbrush thing over here. And right now I've got my fill, some type of orange. So I brought in my colors over here just to cheat. And I wanted to start with this light blue. So I have it on fill, I'll choose my eyedropper and then change it since it's already selected to this blue. The linear gradient tool is this thing right here on the fill and stroke menu from white to gray, click that you'll see the default will take it from whatever you had for the fill color into full transparency. This bar thing is the direction and the starting color and the ending color. If you don't see the bar, click this pencil thing, it should come up. So we've got the blue already there, click the circle. It's gonna start at full transparency. You won't be able to see what color you choose, so take it off transparency, so bring it to full opacity. I'll do the eyedropper and I'm gonna cheat and choose pink <laughs> so we have our beautiful gradient. This is the most basic gradient, just from one color to the other, but it's going the wrong direction because we're trying to make this into a nice, kind of like a moonscape. So I'll put this part up here. You can control it, you can go sideways, you can, you can control which color has more, but we're gonna go into a light blue, into a deep pink, and that looks cool right there, but let's do the triple gradient. To do that, we'll put anywhere between the start and the finish, double click on the bar. That will bring up a diamond that lets you choose another stop. So I'm gonna cheat again and then just choose the pink, which again, just extends the gradient the way it was, but instead, we'll change the color of the diamond to a lighter, <laughs> see that? It just, it's, a, it's subtle, but now we're going from blue to lighter than back into a rich pink. And you can, you can modify this from here too. If you wanna change your blue, maybe make that lighter or darker, a little darker on that. And then maybe we ch end up choosing the pink on the bottom a little bit more coral or something. Yeah, so I just modified it a tiny bit. You could change the center point. I don't wanna see that dramatic line, like right there, the line is too prominent, it fades away. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go with that. Now we can create the moon. So grab the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. If you hold Shift and Control, it'll pull out a perfect circle. Don't make it too big. And we'll change that color to white. And now it vanishes, but that's all right. We'll put it back onto our, <laughs> there's the moon. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna actually change, I'm gonna put a little bit of a sliver, like some shading. So I'll duplicate it once. That's the moon I'm gonna use, and then I'm gonna use this part to duplicate it again, change the color so it's blatantly gonna be clipped. So if I hold shift again, and I can collect both pieces, so I have the red one, and I grab the white one, go to path, difference, and then there's your sliver. Now I can make that a little bit darker, right about there, and then we'll put these two together. You see how the big moon went over my sliver? Up here is hierarchy, so I want my moon to go below just that sliver. So I'm gonna go down one step and that allows me, there we go, that's a minimalist moon, <laughs> just enough. So I'll hold shift again in the middle of nowhere out here, grab it, I wanna group that. Let's zoom out and see how we're looking for sizing. I think I'll lower it into the pink a little more cause I'm gonna add some haze now, right there. And there's a lot of different ways to do this part, but I'm just gonna grab another circle, same thing, just random, randomly draw it out but this time, let's make it like a yellow like haze, like some type of fog almost. I'll drop this so you see how it goes on top of the moon? Let's put the hierarchy beneath it. And that looks just terrible, but it won't for long if I change it to a blur and the opacity goes away. And that just gives it like a little, very subtle, like some haze behind there. 
right about there. I'm just stretching out my haze now, maybe a little, a little more subtle, right there. Let's, let's <laughs> there, there's our moon, kind of our, our moonscape is coming together now. Let's bring it back down to Earth now, and we'll create the rolling hills, like the landmass down here at the bottom. So I'm going to bring in a color palette there to go quicker. I'll choose the Bezier pen tool, and I'm going to hand draw just like the first rolling hill in the back. Let's see what color it starts. Probably the haze. Yeah, there's the haze. So I need to get the opacity back up, and I'll choose this one right there. And as you can see, the shape I'm actually drawing with the Bezier pen is just random. If you have like a coastline that you want to replicate or duplicate, you can use that as a reference point. I just want to have four layers. So that one is the same color, doesn't show any depth. So I'll do eyedropper and then go with one darker. I actually don't like how that's connected right there either. So if you want to change it, there's a couple ways you can change your landscape if you're going to be uh, more precise. One, you can choose edit paths by node. And then each of these little dots you can pull or you can modify. But I think it's going to be okay. If you want to do them all at once, Let's say you go to edit paths by node, you can grab a bunch of them and then see this thing up here, up on your menu, you can round them and then it'll it'll make it more rolling. Actually, actually don't like it round, I'll do control Z to get rid of that. For the next one, I'll cheat, I'll click on this one, I'll do control D to duplicate. Up here, I can change the direction with these arrows. So now it's flipped, then we'll change the color. Where'd my color palette go? Change the color to something darker but I want this one in between the two. So we'll just stretch it out. Yeah, right right about there. And then under hierarchy, I want it to be in front of this guy, but behind that one. So drop it like that. And the hills are done. Time for the beach. I'll draw just like a very gradual incline. Change the color to something darker. And that brings us to the beach. I'll just draw a rectangle. And I'm going to do it way out to the side so I can modify the hierarchy later. That will become sand. And it's going to go a little thinner like that. Now, before we go into the ocean, I'm going to add some glow behind the hills here. So grab your Create Circles and Ellipses tool and make an oval. And then we'll drop the hierarchy behind all the hills. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, so that just looks like a weird sunrise or sunset. Instead... I'm gonna blur it out and then change the opacity, just a hint. I just wanna flirt with the idea of like a sunset, so I have my sun going away and the moon. Not sure how physics works, if my shadows are right, but I'm gonna go with some artistic license here. And you know what? Let's add some more artistic license. Let's make another oval. Let's drop this one behind this hillside. Maybe turn it, hierarchy down one, two, there it goes. And let's blur this out and see if that looks, okay, yeah. Why not? And with that, we can move on to the ocean. That will be a rectangle, a simple rectangle. Just draw, bring it out anywhere you please because we're gonna clip it at the end, but the opacity has to come up. We'll choose purple. And then let's take a look, let's take inventory of what we made so far. Okay, it's getting there. I wanna make the ripples in the ocean now. And to do that, let's grab the Bezier pen tool and we'll do the interpolate function. So what that does is first we'll draw one line that's gonna replicate the waves, just simple. It's got some funky fill on it. So fill, get rid of that. For stroke, I have it on yellow, which is the color I want. Stroke is width is one millimeter, which is fine. Okay, for the interpolate function, I have this curvy path. And I'm gonna add a second path. It'll just be a straight line at the top. And it should be the same colors, let's make sure. It's also yellow, maybe give it some more space. And what this function does is it's gonna take this line and this line and make iterations in between. So I actually have a tutorial on this if you wanna see a more complicated way to make some really cool wave patterns. But in this case, we'll do the most simple way. So I'll select one, hold shift, select the other one. I'll go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate, and I'll get this menu here. So for exponent, I need it on 2.0, and that's gonna bunch up some of the lines before it gets to the second one. Steps is the amount of lines you're gonna create, and I have 20, let's try that. And then interpolation method, I found out that one is the normal way to do it, but two will help it blend between two different styles here, so straight and curvy. So we'll do live preview. Okay, so there, there we go. So this is gonna become our waves. I'll do apply and then close, and that's what we want. So I'm gonna group everything. 
So I'll just grab it all and then do control G and we can bring it down into place. Now you can squeeze it if you want and if you like it the way it looks where it's full opacity, that's good, just keep it. But I'm gonna blur it out a little bit. So we'll go to filter, go to distort and then ripple because it's rippling water. That's just the default. I'll show you how to edit the default if you wanna make more modifications of the ripple. So we'll go to filter editor and then turbulence means how like uh, how wavy you want it. So maybe maybe try that and then color matrix don't mess with displacement map that gets it. So that's kind of good. That looks like shiny. Let's try that. Why not? Why not? But I don't like the color anymore. Kind of diffuse the color. So go back to fill and stroke right there is pretty good. And then also I'm going to show some of the moon shining onto the whole thing. So I'll grab another oval, turn our fill on, opacity up, turn the stroke off, and then we'll just drop it in. And that's gonna be on top of everything. All right, let's blur that thing. Blur, <laughs> that's like an alien beam, that's too much. A lot of blur, some opacity. I think it all boils down to what is the message you're trying to send with this with this image? Do you want it to be moody, like a real, <laughs> you want it to be sci-fi or just subtle? Somewhere in between, we'll go with that right there. All right, so now we can group the whole thing and then we can clip out whichever proportions that we want. So I'll back out a little bit. I'm gonna hold shift and grab everything except my colors. I still got my colors. If you grab something you don't want, just hold shift and unclick it. And then control G groups everything together. Zoom in, too much. <laughs> Zoom in so you can see. And then now we'll make our clipping box. So grab the rectangle tool and just drag out a rectangle. We want it to be clear because we want to be able to see through it, but I want to see the edges better. So click on your image that we built together, then hold shift, click on the clipping box. And opacity is okay to be translucent there. Go to object, clip, set. <laughs> and there it is. There is our wherever. I don't know where in the world this one is. It could be anywhere. It could be, it could be in your dreams. So that is it. There is our 2D flat vector minimalist landscape art that we made in Inkscape. If you have any ideas for other tutorials you'd like to see, just drop a comment below and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And we'll see you.